Alright, so uh, 3.5 uh, in trig, we're just going to do some examples here to see what we've learned. Um, we have y equals x squared plus 5x minus 6, and we just want to graph it and find the uh, max and min. So to graph it and find the max and min, um, you could just use your graphing calculator if you wanted to, or we could rewrite it in the standard form. So either way works, um, but to find the max and min, the easiest way to do this is the formula negative b over 2a. So it's negative b, so b is 5, um, over 2a, and that happens to be a 1, so it's negative 5 over 2, but that's not the whole point, that's just the x. So I take that and I plug it in for x, so when I plug it in, negative 5 over 2 squared plus 5 over negative 5 over 2 minus 6, so I get 25 over 4 because I square both those. Negative 25 over 2 minus 6. I put it over 1 and I find a common denominator. So I multiply the top and the bottom of this one by 2. I multiply the top and the bottom of this one by 4. So I get 25 over 4, 50 over 4, 24 over 4. So I 25 minus 50 minus 24. Get negative 49 over 4. And that simplifies if we wanted to. Uh, actually, it does not. So there is our point. So that means I go over negative 5 over 2, which this is about um, negative 2.5 and negative 12.25. So I go over negative 2.5 and, and down about negative 12.25 and put a point, which we're saying is somewhere about here. This is your minimum value, and the reason I know is because the parabola goes and opens this way. So it should be about over here, so I have it over, should be over a little bit more, um, almost a half over a little more, but, um, and then we can factor that. Um, and the reason why I'm factoring that is because when I factor it, I can find the x-intercepts. and what multiplies to give you negative 6 that adds together to give you 5, 6 and negative 1, which means it crosses the x-axis at negative 6 and positive 1. So at positive 1 I'd put a point and at negative 6 I'd put a point and I can just connect those. And there's my graph. Alright, graph the quadratic and find the max and min again. So this is negative because it's negative, that means I'm finding my max because I know the graph's going to look like this, so I know I'm finding a max. So when I go about this, it's a negative b over 2a, so it's negative 4 over 2 times a negative 1, which is negative 4 over negative 2, which is positive 2. Well, that's easy enough to plug in. So 2, when I plug that in there, I'm getting 9. So my max is over 2 and up 9. And there's that point. Now this, I want to see if it can be factored, and I can factor it. I can take a negative out, and then afterwards, um, two things that multiply to give me negative 5, that add to give me a negative 1. Uh, or sorry, multiply to give me negative 5, that add to give me a negative 4, or negative 5 and positive 1. So the x values are positive 5 and negative 1, which means that's where it's crossing the x-axis at. So it's crossing it at positive 5, and it's crossing at negative 1. And I know that the graph's going down, so I can just connect them, and there is my graph. If you can't factor, that's when you want to do completing the squares. That's what we were talking about um, in the 3.5 lesson. But if you can factor, it's much easier just to plot those uh, points um, where it crosses the x-axis. Just much simpler to do that. Alright, but now with this one, um, it's already in standard form. So to graph this, the max and min are simple. Remember, um, this, we can tell that it's a maximum point we're finding because it's a negative out in front. So I know that my graph is going to look like this. Okay, so I know that it's going to be a maximum point. Um, this right here, it's the opposite of h and k, so my point will be a negative 1, 3, because it's the opposite of h and k. So I go over negative 1 and up 3 and put a point. Okay. And from here, just put my uh, points in. Um, 
and graph it. And to do that, you can just plug in points, plug in a zero, you know, and see the point. And whatever it is over here, because, you know, it has to be the same on both sides. So if you plug in a zero, you figure out right away, oh, that's one. One squared is one. Negative two times one is negative two. Negative two plus three is one. You can do that math quick in your head. So if it's over one this way, then it's only a distance of one on this side as well. And then from there, if you were to plug in the value of one, one times well, one plus one is two. Two squared is four. Four times negative two is negative eight. Negative eight plus three is negative five. So you just found out where that is. And then once again, just count to the center over two and over, and there you go. There are your points. And I guess on this one, we already have the graph up there, um, but with this you can tell it's going to go up because it's a positive 3 so that's why the graph is going to look like this meaning I'm finding a minimum point so um, the opposite of H is 2 and K is 4 so it's 2 4 and notice how oh, there's 2 4 and then once again I can just put in like I'll probably put in a 1 myself because whatever 1 is that means it's going to be the other side of that and then I'm probably going to plug in a 0 because 0 would be simple plug in and it'll be the same on the other side. Um, once again, if you have a graphing calculator, do not waste your time graphing. Please just plug it in. Please, please, please just plug it in and waste your time. You've done this in Algebra 2. You've done graphs in Algebra 1. You don't need to make up a list. You don't need to make a table. Just use your graphing calculator. Rewrite that in vertex form, and we shall do these when I come back and finish up on rewriting in vertex form.